big mid caps and smaller large caps have lost 50 or 60 percent of their value in a year. Do you see any sign of a bottom or a turn? Yeah, so actually your previous guest was talking about buying things that are out of favor. Well, energy is certainly it. And an amazing statistic for you. You mentioned energy is 4.7% of the S&P. That is the lowest since 1999 when oil was 10 bucks a barrel. Uh, you know, today we're obviously we're north of 50 bucks a barrel. So, yes, the the equities have diverged from the commodity itself. Yep. The commodity has been, you know, tough of late, still up year to date, though. The stocks are obviously down. Um, what that means is multiples have compressed. And that creates, at least on, on a selective basis, a lot of buying opportunities, particularly among, you know, some of the higher quality names, but also, frankly, you know, those small cap kind of high beta uh, ideas that are really really destroyed over I mean, the last been, several been, months. They've been decimated, and we have this they, chart, and we're going yes. to bring it up. We brought it up earlier. We'll bring it up again. It's the XOP, one of the bigger ETFs out there, against the price of oil. Normally, they sort of trade the same way, but now the XOP and most oil and gas stocks, Pavels, I don't need to tell you, are trading below where they were when oil was at $30 a barrel. In other words, investors... Yeah have literally given up and they seem to not even care that oil's at 51. Yeah, so there is an element here of selling begets selling, which is to say when energy, the whole sector is less than 5% of the market, for a lot of fund generalists, it's just too small to matter. So there is that. Um, I think there is an ESG uh, dynamic at work here where you have some you know, funds kind of shying away from fossil fuels in general, although that's more relevant for coal than, than it is for oil and gas. Um, but it's just a lot of apathy right now. And again, this creates buying opportunities, particularly uh, 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 on uh, the most oil levered equity. Yeah. So natural gas is different. Natural gas is in a structural bear market. Oil, in our view, is actually going to be setting new cyclical highs in 2020 you know we're looking well, why for do you why do you believe that because production keeps going up in america and you mentioned natural gas a bunch of pipelines are being built and if these companies finally have a way to get their natural gas to market they're going to keep producing more oil because they want the gas because they need to sell it to the lng producers well we we should never get into a one hand clapping approach so if we just look at u.s oil supply yes that's up Saudi Arabia is down. Venezuela's collapsed. Iran's collapsed because of sanctions. Russia had a pipeline outage. If countries like Mexico and China and Colombia, where production is basically flat, it's down also in the North Sea. So, yes, there are a few places that are growing, notably the U.S., Brazil to a lesser degree. But in general, supply is actually looking much more bullish than it did six months ago. The problem right now mm -hmm. for the price is demand. And this is really where the trade war uh, has obviously weighed so much, mostly as a matter of sentiment, psychology, rather than actual impact, physical impact on demand. Yeah. Now, when this trade war subsides, maybe it doesn't even end, but just subsides, that's going to be a great catalyst for oil prices to go back okay, up. So